Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today is one of those days that really just blew my mind. Uh, that's all I can really tell you. So I'm attending right now the MicroStrategy World Now Conference. And they're going everything about how Bitcoin works, the macro strategy, and really delving into why corporations and institutions need to get into this like right now. And it's only been two hours or so uh, that we've been into it, but already, I mean, all the things that I know, I don't know that much. And I'm gonna go over everything that we talked about or that was talked about. Uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, reserve, treasury reserve policy quickly, uh, take about corporates investing in crypto, which is all good information, but really it comes down to this guy right here, Ross Stevens. He is the CEO of NYDIG. And I'm gonna explain why this guy really should be the spokesperson for Bitcoin moving forward. So we'll take a look at that, uh, but uh, first let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the market. So uh, today is, uh, geez, when is it? February 3rd, almost a high noon, high noon Texas time, uh, trying to get uh, through this before the next session comes about. And uh, thank, I don't have a great memory, so what I did was I just tweeted out everything that I thought was interesting uh, that was going on. So we'll just go over uh, what the things that were said in detail, and we'll do that in a second. So. Right now, uh, let's take a look at the market. So Trade the Chain, uh, if you don't know Trade the Chain, it's a pretty great uh, format. This is, it's, it's good to see what's going on in the market, but it also does sentiment analysis and gives you a projected uh, price range uh, just based on news and what is going on in the Twitterverse because in my opinion, this whole market's moved by news and that's pretty much about it. All right, so Bitcoin, in the last 24 hours up 6%, that's pretty good, uh, 37,000, not too shabby. Uh, Ethereum, 10%. Uh, Ethereum might, at some point soon, break that $2,000 barrier, let's hope so. Head is Tether, and then Polkadot has flipped with XRP yet again, which is not surprising. I'm not really happy about what happened with the uh, XRP pump and dump. Congratulations, it makes us look really bad. And uh, that's it. So XRP, although, is still up 3% for the day at 38 cents, whatever. Cardano, uh, up 0.66, but still maintaining around 44 cents. Hopefully, get to that 50 cent mark, and that'd be great. Uh, Litecoin's up 8%, chilling. You know what? In all honesty, everything's up like massively today. Not, I mean, massive. Big for us, right? Uh, it'd be, it's, it's colossal for the traditional markets. We just call this a, a Wednesday. Nobody cares. Uh, but yeah, looking pretty good. 16% for Aave. What else is the big movers and shakers? 4%, 8% for synthetics, 14% uh, for sushi. Hmm, sushi, DeFi, go figure. But uh, yeah, and also, uh, just so you know, synthetics, you can get a fantastic uh, APY or yield if you put it over with uh, Celsius. I think it's like 18% right now. Matic and, and, uh, and synthetics are huge. So uh, look, everything's up uh, in, in this entire market. And it was kind of what I was, I was kind of thinking this would happen, I mean, with Bitcoin. I didn't realize it was going to triple over to the altcoins, but retrospectively looking back, I can totally see why that would happen. And this is a video that we did just, uh, geez, January 27th. And uh, we talked about this event that's going on right now with uh, Michael Saylor and Michael Strategy. And I said, hey, they're going to get together all these institutions and all these, these corporations. They're going to pretty much just give them the playbook. And once they lay it out, there's going to be some huge FOMO going on. And just in the first two hours, what I listened to, I got FOMO. I was like, holy smokes, I haven't put enough money into this. But uh, we reserved, you know, dollar cost average, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it, is, it is exciting. But we just have to, you know, take a step back and look at what is going on and just uh, gobble up all this information that we can. So let's just break into what's going on. So this is today the MicroStrategy World event, and uh, it's two days. So our first days are pretty much Michael Saylor talking with some different guests, talking about how, how they did their strategy to acquire so much in microtransactions. And then tomorrow they're going to have uh, more big people come in. You're going to have the Coinbases and the Kraken and the Geminis. And they're going to talk to all these people and just pretty much say, hey, this is, this is how they do it. Uh, we can be your, your custody partners. Uh, we want your business. And they're all here. They're all here in one place. It's beautiful. And one thing that really struck out to me was Michael Saylor when he was talking. He's very humble. I mean, usually in, in different um, interviews, he's kind of like, you know, he's just really loquacious guy, really talkative, really gets out there. But in this one, he was like, you know, I just really missed the boat on Bitcoin. <laughs> It's like, what the heck? This is the guy that's saying he missed the board of Bitcoin. It was pretty interesting. And he's like, he's like, I never understood how big it was. And then he started to talk about, you know, he's really, really is a futurist, kind of like Elon Musk. And he talks about how a year ago, he thought that uh, the only way to communicate with people was face to face. He had to be, he had to be in front of people's face to make them understand. He said, 
the world is changing and it's changing at such a rapid rate that we just really can't comprehend it. And when we have such, such a rapid pace, all the things that I used to think were truisms are not. And uh, me being able to be in front of people, that is not the case. He goes, I can do everything remotely. I can, it doesn't matter what time zone you're in, any part of the globe, it doesn't really matter anymore. He goes, we can do so many things with technology that we just didn't really think about that we could do. He goes, now it opens up a lot of possibilities such as with Bitcoin. So uh, they gave us, these are just downloads and I'll, I'll disseminate this information as best I can later. Uh, it's pretty lengthy. Uh, well, it's 16 pages, but it's a small font. And uh, just talks about their treasury reserve policy, also gives us the corporates investing, also gives them tax advice and all the different things that, uh, that they did. So really, like I said before, they are giving them the playbook on a golden platter. And it is not, they're not even like, I'm attending this for free. They have premium events for, for, for the big people, but it's just peanuts for, for, for what they could pay and what they're actually going to get as far as an ROI. So I think things are gonna to start to move much faster after this. Now I could be wrong, I mean, again, Entities, corporations, institutions, they're not known to make a lot of fast moves, but you gotta, if you got big companies like a mass mutual insurance company, I mean, they do their due diligence. I think people can look to that and go, okay, what did these guys do? What's going on? And the big thing, of course, is scarcity or the finiteness, if that's even a word, of Bitcoin. And with all the people in attendance, and I can see who's attending, and I can tell you there's some, there's some pretty good big people out there that have already connected with me. And I'm just telling you, like, if these people see all the other people going, okay, well, there's only so much to go around. I need to get in this. And this is what this gentleman right here, uh, Ross Stevens, was talking about today. This was the first hour. And just in this hour, I wish I, I could have recorded it. Hopefully, they'll, they'll put it up. They'll probably put it up in snippets later. But, well, first of all, who is this guy? Who is this? Was he a janitor? No. So, Ross Stevens, uh, he founded NYDIG. And NYDIG, if, if you've been listening to the news lately, uh, they're the ones that are, are really getting in for you know hedge funds and really getting into uh, the allocation of Bitcoin, buying up Bitcoin and being a part of that process. And uh, they've got a pretty big order book. And just to give a little something away, Ross even talked about, he goes, look, he goes, uh, we had five billion. We've, we've gobbled up, uh, what did he say, two to three billion, up to five billion. He goes, but in the next, by the end of this year, we'll have 25 billion worth of Bitcoin. He goes, and that's just us. And I'm like, Phew, here we go. Anyhow. Uh, he serves as its uh, executive chairman. Ross also founded Stone Ridge in 2012 and serves as the CEO and member of the management committee. Ross started his career at Goldman Sachs after receiving his PhD in finance and statistics from the University of Chicago and his BSc in finance from the University of Pennsylvania at Wharton. Um, founded Stevens Center of Innovation and Finance at the University of Pennsylvania. So pretty smart guy. And when he's talking, I could totally understand. And there was things that... Um, the concepts and the history of money, which was fascinating when he took a look back all the way into uh, Japan and, and China and, and how fiat just has always crumbled and uh, the, the central banks, how they've made the mistakes. So there was all these different things that came about that came about so quickly that I was like, you know what, I need to really uh, to jot my memory or, you know, so I can jog my memory. I needed to write all these things down. And what I did was I just tweeted them all out because that way I could tell you what the heck is going on and what he was talking about. So remember, this isn't this is me looking at this. These are big corporations, these are institutions. They're all hearing this same message. And this same message is going to really soak in. And again, like I've said before, I don't think that all these places are going to be like, okay, let's do it tomorrow. Let's get it done. There's going to be some like that. I think very few like that. But others will be like, wait, wait, this doesn't make any sense to me. I need to really you know, digest this, give it to our legal team, our financial team, and see if this really works for us. And then some people won't do anything with it. So there's, it's just like an adoption curve. So that's, I think, what's gonna happen. So this was all the tweets I sent out. Let me just scroll down. Oh yeah, eh, for Steve. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm in a joke here. Uh, I said Mike Taylor came out and he's dumping all his Bitcoin for Doge. Just kidding. Anyhow. And then, so the, the, the very first part where uh, Ross is talking about, he goes, and it's true, he goes, this whole conference is about reserve assets. And what they really try to get into the heads of all the big CEOs that are, that are attending, or even like small business or, or people in annuities or anybody with hedge funds, it's really about um, all the different assets that are out there. That If you are in fiat or if you are just in money, uh, Ross even said it, he goes, we can't get out of fiat fast enough. As soon as that comes in, we are swapping it out for Bitcoin. And he even talks about, he goes, these days, 
he gave a good analogy. He said, when you first learn Spanish or when you learn French, you have to, uh, you know, transfer over the, the, the wording from English into French and then you speak it, or English into Spanish and you speak it. It was the same thing happened with Bitcoin when I first got into it. It was dollars to Bitcoin and then, then I would put it down. He goes, but now everything is just in Bitcoin. And because of that, everything's in Bitcoin, everything makes total sense. And I can kind of understand where he's coming from. It makes a lot of sense, makes, it makes sense to me. And then he says, this, and he goes, the CEO's question, and he's talking about all CEOs question right now, sitting right here, is usually this, how do we change liquid assets into e-liquid assets and our e-liquid assets into a liquid assets? Cash is, well, so cash is not a liability. Cash is now a liability. And it's the truth because look at what's happening with the quantitative easing. With all the different uh, money printing that is going on, it is devaluing the dollar. So all these, these CEOs, uh, these CFOs, or CIOs that are sitting on this mountain of money, it's on fire. Well, it's like, like sailors, like Michael would talk about. It's like, a, it's like a melting iceberg. So if they want to just sit there and just watch it evaporate, that's fine. But it's going to happen, especially with what is going on. I mean, we're going to have a, there's a bill, I don't know if it's $2 trillion or $3 trillion, which is weird to even say. I don't know if it's two or three trillion in these days, but that's just how it is. And, and if I say that so flippantly, and I'm just an average Joe, well, you know, how is everybody else saying it? Oh, it's just three trillion dollars. You know, we'll just wheel it around in wheelbarrows or whatever else. All right. And then he talked about Bitcoin is the only form of money ever in existence that is entirely unaffected by demand. And it makes sense. Now, I own gold and silver. I know what, what gold bugs are going to say. Well, you know what, even if there's more demand, we can't do anything. Well, that's not true. I mean, you can, you can rustle up a ton of more people or even a new business and go, we want you to mine gold. We want to put more money into the smeltering plants. We want to do, uh, put more money into the processing of gold so we can extract it from the ground faster and we can get it. You can't do that with Bitcoin. You just can't do that with Bitcoin. It's just like Bitcoin's like, I don't care what you want. This is how much I'm going to give you. This is, you know, it's all mathematics and uh, I can only give you so much per day. I think it's 900 Bitcoin per day right now. And uh, that's all you're going to get. And the last one's going to be mine at 2140. So hope you got time because I'm not doing anything. And then the last, well, well moving on, he says, um, I didn't know this. He says, Visa isn't that fast. Final settlement actually happens in two or three days with your banks. When you buy coffee, there is a transaction. And we always think about TPS, the transactions per second. We talk about Visa being so fast at like 50,000 or 75,000 TPS or whatever it is. And we're like, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin can never match that. But he says, that's not the case. He goes, you have to understand. He goes, the final settlement doesn't happen for two to three days between Visa and your bank. So right, that, right there, there's a little bit of credit going on. But there is a long time before there is final settlement. And he's going to talk about Zap and uh, Jack Mayers. Is that his name? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second about how they are able to transfer uh, thousands, millions, tens of millions of dollars in uh, literally no time across the world for free. And uh, it's on a scaling solution. And it was pretty fascinating how they did it. And then he says, uh, we believe that the value will depreciate over the next 10 to 20 years. Oh, I should have said, we believe that the value of the dollar will depreciate over the next 10 to 20 years relative to Bitcoin. So for us, it only made sense to move our cash reserves into Bitcoin. And there's this picture right here. Let me, let me blow this up. I don't know if you've ever seen this. But I've had this image before. And it's the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar going back from 1913 to 2013. I can tell you right now, uh, 2021, uh, it's even gone even below that. So this is why we talk about how like, like your grandparents were like, I bought, used to buy a car for a nickel or whatever they'd say. Uh, and it's just the truth because the purchasing power has gone down and that's why we had to print more money. That's why salaries have gone up, but the purchasing power of the dollar has actually decreased. So this is a problem. 1913, pretty at the highest point. 1933, FDR's executive order makes it illegal to hold gold, uh, gold and uh, they started to confiscate it. 1944, the Bretton Woods established the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, which I think would be pretty positive, but still went down. 1971, Nixon totally took us off the gold standard, and uh, here we are at 2013, the latest one, I'm sure there's a new one, at a nickel as opposed to a dollar. So uh, that is the problem right there with what's going on. So when he was talking about this, I'm like, well, that makes sense because, I mean, if you just, like, again, if you just have it on dollars and the purchasing power is going down, they know it's going down, but there was no other options before. Even in 2017, a lot of these corporations were like, I am not putting it into Bitcoin. Because 
that is unproven. It can go to zero. It is highly volatile. And uh, so, but now that's all changed. And this is why I have believed that 2021 is, gonna, is a huge year. And when he says it, when he puts it out like this, even to me, who has a cryptocurrency digital asset channel, it makes total sense. I mean, like beyond a reasonable amount of doubt. Uh, and I think that a lot of these CEOs, CFOs, CIOs are looking at this going, okay, I get it. It might take a little bit longer, but uh, if they just watch this again, make a lot of it make a lot of sense. And then he says, uh, the most important decision all CEO, CEOs will make in the next 10 years will be if they should move over to Bitcoin and make it the standard. Right now, very few will say that. It's the most important question they'll face, uh, but it will be. And I can see that because your job as a CEO is to make the shareholders happy. And if the dollar amount, the purchasing power doesn't go as far as it used to, well, it's kind of hard to, to buy equipment, uh, to buy staff, to buy whatever you need when the purchasing power goes down because you're sitting on cash. But that's why this guy Ross was even saying, Bitcoin's not volatile. The dollar's volatile. The dollar and fiat is volatile. And we need to get out of that as fast as possible. I'm like, wow, that's it. And then he says the same thing. We can't get our fiat assets fast enough. And he says, we'll be buying more Bitcoin. He says this, we'll be buying more Bitcoin in the next two years than we did in the last eight. And come up to the last two sections. Well, there's, there's two, two things. I'll say this first. First of all, just like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency digital assets will, will accelerate very quickly uh, over these, these next few months, eight months, year, two years, 10 years. The same thing is with our, with our channel. So we reached 100K just like a week ago. And now we're at 120,000. So thanks so much for everybody who has uh, subscribed. Really appreciate it. And then he says, we use Jack Mallers, I think it's Mallers, service Strike to move money for free to any in the world, anywhere in the world by leveraging the Lightning Network. We can move thousands or millions almost instantly and for free. So what is he talking about? This is what he's talking about. This was... First of all, that's Jack Mallers. I had heard about this and actually Pomp had tweeted it out and it was this video. I wanna show you this video and tell me if you're not blown away. Let's uh, blow this, first of all, let's make this. Let's blow this up. Let's play the video. This is Mr. Felton, a strike engineer based in Europe. Zap and Strike's headquarters is here in Chicago, Illinois in the United States. Typically, we pay Mr. Felton once a month with an international wire transfer and get absolutely crushed on fees and it never gets there in time. Now that we can stream money, we can send money any amount, at any time, anywhere in the world, in less than a second and at no cost, why get paid once a month? Mr. Felton, you wanna get paid every five seconds? Yeah, let's do it. Boom. Every five second payroll deployed. What's happening is US dollars is leaving Zap's business account from the United States and is flying over the Lightning Network and converted and received as euros in Europe in real time every five seconds. We are literally streaming money around the world instantly and at no cost. Mike dropped. So is that crazy? I mean, that's crazy. That's free transactions going to anywhere in the world at any time, and it can just happen in microseconds. What is that gonna to do to SWIFT? What is that gonna do to the banking service? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And uh, that is one of those things that just blew me away. So that is all for today. Also, uh, for Trade the Chain, if you're looking for, like I said, sentiment analysis, there's a link in the description below. Uh, there's a 14 day money back guarantee. And this is what I use, not, not just for that, but to just to look at, you know, like just ranges and, and what's really going on in the market. It's kind of interesting. And then you can, you can arrange this anywhere you want to. Uh, so that is it for today. So first of all, hey, you made it all the way in. Thanks. Uh, if you liked it, hit a thumbs up. Also, why don't you consider subscribing? A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive. So uh, that'd be uh, help you out, help me out. And uh, everybody's a winner. So uh, that is it. I will give you more videos uh, as uh, things come out, let you know what's going on. But that's it for today. So if you like those videos, uh, there's going to be two more going to pop up on your left and right. I'm not sure what YouTube do its magic. And uh, that is all for today. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.